So Line 6 have recently released a firmware update for their Helix range of products. Some of the features look really cool, and I thought, yeah, I want to check those out. I'm going to download that, maybe even do a video on it. And I finally found some time to do the update the other day, and that's where things went horribly wrong. To this day, what happened is by far the scariest thing that has happened to me with regards to the Helix since I bought it. And I'm going to tell you all about it. Still gives me chills thinking about it. I need a hot drink. So welcome back to the Profunctionist channel. In today's video, as you probably heard, we are looking at the problems that I've had with the new 3.50 firmware update for my Helix. Now, when I say problems, I don't mean problems with the actual uh, updates and you know the features, because I actually never got to that stage. I have now. There is a happy ending to this story, but it didn't go according to plan. So I heard about the update and thought, yeah, those are some cool features. I would like to uh, download that. Uh, I didn't have time at the time. Uh, eventually I did have time uh, and I was actually working on uh, something on my Helix that I was gonna do in conjunction with my Mesa Boogie Mark 535 amp, which I'm hoping to use on the gigs coming up soon where I'm gonna use the two of them together. Let me know if you wanna see a video on that. It's gonna use some of the features that we've talked about in recent videos. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna be using the Helix with my amp, then it makes sense that I should probably update the firmware update first. So in case there's any conflict with the previous um, software or uh, firmware update, you know, not conflicting with whatever the new one is if I, if I was to update afterwards. So I thought, yeah, let me update first. It's a good, good, good time to do it. I can do it now and it will save me to do it later. And then I'm ready to do, to check, look at it, to check it out and to do a video on it potentially. So I had read up on a few things about the update. There's a lot of people having issues with it, you know, uh, same as me actually, say, uh, just trying to install it in the first place. And what I had read, the common theme, the common problem that I'd seen is that for some reason people were updating the firmware update on the Helix before updating the firmware update for HX Edit. Now, HX Edit is the software that interfaces with the Helix, so you can use it on your computer. And apparently for this one, you have to update that first. So I did that. Uh, on the, since a few updates ago, uh, Line 6 have made it a lot easier to update your Helix. So when you use HX Edit, you can just, it will tell you in the corner, in the bottom right-hand side, if you're up to date or not. And if not, it says there are updates available. So great, clicked on that. And it, lo and behold, it comes up with the two updates that I needed, one for the HX Edit and one for the HX uh, for the Helix. Perfect. And you know, since a few updates ago, they've streamlined this, where before you had to use the Line 6 updater first to kind of update everything, and then you have to update everything individually. And it, it was a bit more of a longer process, and which has since been streamlined. So I thought, brilliant, let's do that. Let's not make the same mistake that other people are doing. Uh, updated HX Edit, no problems, all good. Uh, went to update the Helix, so downloaded the firmware and started the update process, and it was um, updating on, you can see it on the screen on the Helix, it was updating, and then all of a sudden the connection was broken, and I got a message on the Helix screen, an error message saying boot failure entered update mode. 
So I'm panicking at this point. I'm like, oh, what have I done? Have I just bricked my, my Helix? I do I have to do I need to buy another one and spend over a thousand pounds on a new one? So to the internet. And the first thing I checked out was what Line 6 uh, said on their website or what I, what, what, how to, you know, the step-by-step how to, how to install it, which I kind of skimmed over before. I didn't read it every, you know, word for word, but I kind of got the gist of it. And uh, I do remember seeing at the near the beginning, it says when you have this error message, everything's fine, you're nearly there. But there was something, there was something about what was happening to me that didn't feel quite right. Now, if I'd left it, would it have updated? I don't think so. And the reason I say that is because of what happened later on, which we'll get to in a moment. So I'm doing Google searches, looking for the, this problem and seeing if other people have had it and if they've, if they've managed to fix it. And what I found, I found, I found a few and I found uh, not many videos on YouTube, which is actually what, partly why I'm making this video. I did find one which was quite useful and my journey through this through the Valley of the Shadow of Death. I do believe it was a worship channel that I, that I saw the video on, so appropriately, um, as we go through the Valley of the Shadow of Death, his, his journey was quite similar to mine, but not exactly the same, I don't think. So the common theme with people and their fixes for this was to go back to using the Line 6 updater. So if you go onto the Line 6 website, into the, the download section, you can download this, this piece of software. I think it even comes up on the right-hand side of the screen, and uh, if you click on that, it knows what computer you're using and you download the correct version. Uh, otherwise, you've, you get directed to choose your software, so Line 6 Updater, your device, the Helix, and your operating system, which in my case is uh, I'm using a Mac. So downloaded it, installed it. Uh, I was using my new MacBook, which I'd only got a few weeks ago, and it didn't previously have the update software in this. So I installed it, uh, ran it. Uh, it. It prompts you to log in or to go offline. I initially logged in and then all I got was a blank screen and it just held there for a while. I was like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? Um, I grabbed my, my old laptop, my old MacBook Air and thought, well, it should still work on that. So let me see if I can do the same thing on that. So I got my old my old MacBook Air, again, blank screen. Did some more reading. There was one person on, on one of the forums who suggested that you needed to go, rather than logging in with the updater, you click on offline mode. And I did find myself reinstalling it a few times because I couldn't find a way to go back to click on um, offline mode. So I ended up just reinstalling it again and it took me to the same screen. Clicked on offline mode and again, nothing. So there's that fear again. Have I just bricked my my Helix? What am I going to do? I mean, luckily I didn't have a gig that night, or the, or and, you know, then or the next night. But still, now one of the pieces of information they have on these fixes is make sure that your laptop, your computer is not, or your Helix is not con connected via a hub. So my MacBook Pro, the new one, my new MacBook has, and you'll see this on the new MacBooks, they only, the only connections they have are USB-C, which is fine. The printer cable I use to connect to my Helix has USB-A at the end, so I had to get a, uh, an adapter, which I already had, and connected it that way. And, it, and it's worked previously, we're just using HX Edit, just as normal, it, that's worked fine. But I was thinking to myself, is this, would this be considered a hub? It's not really, it's not a hub, it's not one of those breakout boxes with the different USB ports in it so you can connect old US, use US, old USB um, cables. But I thought, I don't know, is it, is it essentially that in this case? So I thought, let's keep it as simple as possible. Back to the MacBook Air, the old one with the USB-A ports that we're all used to. Again, nothing seemed to happen. I kept going back and forth between the two MacBooks. And finally what happened, I think while I was searching something on the, on the, on the new MacBook, you know, uh, while the other one was connected, I did reinstall it. I did have it connected. I think I went into, I think I had logged in as opposed to online mode. And I was on the computer, looked up, and there was the options there. It just, it had just come up. So what do you, what would you like to update? I want to update my Helix, please. Yes, please. Bring it on. Let's get this over and done with as soon as possible. The happy ending is I clicked on the update and it started updating. The screen on the uh, Helix changed as well. And I was like, oh, finally, it's not that message anymore. It's a message saying it's doing something. 
One of the other things I read on one of the forums was make sure your, your computer that's doing the update isn't going to get interrupted by doing anything. Don't open up any new apps or go to your browser or anything. Don't, don't search the internet. Just let it do its thing. So I thought, OK, I'm not going to touch it. Right, so that progress bar is making progress. Uh, I would like to move my laptop to a better position so I'm not getting so much reflection, but I'm scared to do that in case it nudges the uh, the USB cable and disconnects everything. So, yeah, very tentative process here. Never been so scared about updating my Helix ever. But anyway, this is the angle you're going to get. <laughs> I even turned off the screensaver and the sleep mode, but just in case. I just didn't want anything to go wrong. Uh, and apparently took about 10 minutes. That sounded about right. Five to 10 minutes took me to up, to update, and then it was done. Finally, I'm out of the valley of the shadow of death. So why did this happen in the first place? I remember there's a, there's a funny, something funny on, online. I think it's, I don't know if it's on the, on the Line 6 website, but basically they're saying that here's how to do the update. People will laugh at you if, if you get it wrong and your update goes wrong because we've told you how to do it. This is how to do it. Uh, and be prepared to be mocked if, if you do get it wrong. So I got it wrong. But what I think happened in my case was, and this is there's some learning here which might help you as well, I think my laptop started to go to sleep during the during the update. So my laptop wasn't connected to any power at the time. It was pretty much fully charged. It didn't need to be connected to power. And what I did notice just right before the disconnection happened and the, I got the error messages was my screen dimmed and I think it went off as well before the screensaver came on. And I think that is what disconnected my laptop from my Helix. Now, if you've ever used HX Edit and you've got it connected to your uh, your laptop to your Helix and you're kind of using it to maybe edit a preset and maybe you're just kind of trying it out, it's having a little play. And if you leave it long enough, your your screensaver will start will come on or your your uh, computer will go to sleep if it's if it's maybe a laptop. When you go back, when you open it up again, when you wake it up, you'll notice that your HX edit has disconnected from your Helix, which is fine because it reconnects itself pretty much straight away. It takes a couple of seconds and then reconnects and you can start editing again. So I think that is what happened with in my case. I, From what I understand, you do need to update HX edit first to 3.5 before you do the update for your actual Helix itself. So there's two updates and I did that. So if there's something I'm missing, by the way, let me know because I didn't want to experiment too much during this because I was a bit panicked that some, everything had gone wrong. Um, so I didn't want to take any chances on trying things out. So I just wanted to get it fixed, which luckily I did. Uh, but I think that's what happened in my case. So the takeaway from this, make sure your laptop, while you, when you're doing this update, uh, maybe turn your screensaver off or maybe make it a bit, make it a bit longer at least. Um, you may also have some battery saving things to change as well. So I think my, that's why I think that's what happened. My screen dimmed because it was trying to save battery. If you go into your battery settings, at least on a Mac, if you go into system preferences, into battery settings, you can um, adjust when your computer will go into like battery saving mode. Uh, I think it might even just help to have it plugged in because uh, that way it knows that the, the power supply is uninterrupted and it doesn't have to bother saving battery because it's connected to a, to the wall. But yeah, just keep these things in mind when you do this update. So what happened after that? Well, in terms of the update, the step-by-step -step thing on the on the Line 6 website suggests that you do a factory reset of your Helix. So by this point, you should have backed up your Helix right at the beginning. It prompts you to do that. You should have done it anyway. I did that, so that's fine. My battery's about to run out in a minute, so I may end up getting cut off. In fact, let me go and change the battery first. Okay, I think we're back. So where were we? I actually haven't tried many of them out. I tried one out just to make sure it was all working. So far, so so far, so good. But I have heard that there are conflicts sometimes with the uh, if you're using some of your older presets from the previous. Uh, software update or firmware update, it might conflict in some ways with some of the new stuff. 
So if you do update, be aware of that. I think it's through the cabs mainly, so because they've really updated the, their virtual cabs. So, yeah, be aware of that if you are going to update to 3.5. Um, but, yeah, I basically did my update. It all seems to be working out, and I hope if you've had this problem that this has helped you in some way. If it has, please give this video a like. If you really liked it, please, I'd love you if you subscribed. You can also check out my Helix presets. They are downloadable for free from the custom tone part of the Helix website. Uh, I've done videos on, I think, all of them, or well, at least most of them, so check some of those out as well. Uh, you can download those for free, but if you do want to give something back, you can buy me a coffee, because I do like my coffee. And there is a link for, for both the uh, the presets and to, for the buy me a coffee in the uh, description below. Um, so yeah, so if you want to download something, give something back, you can buy me a coffee. Or if you just like what I do on this channel, or if this video has helped you in particular, you can get, uh, buy me a coffee as well. So, and I appreciate that, uh, and I thank you in advance for that. Let me know what, what what your experiences were in the comments below. Did you have anything similar to me, where it you know it was a near miss? Uh, are you still having problems? Mention that in the comments. And if you, also, if you have any solutions for anyone who may still be having problems, please put those in the comments below as well, and we can kind of help each other out as a community, which is uh, always a great thing to do. But yeah, I will leave it there. It's a happy ending, and hopefully it will stay that way. And I look forward to checking out the new features on the Helix and uh, doing a video on that. So subscribe to see that, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. So take care of yourself.